Hey yo daddy yo, here comes the Galaga arrangement video out of anything else. Uh, <laughs> I've actually recorded it because I thought it would be a neat uh, video to discuss, uh, once again to discuss how you can hack, uh, you know, not just smart, but you know, very smart. You got to look for alternative ways when you hacking things. And the whole history is I've um, spent about like seven hours trying to hack Galaga Arrangement because I really wanted to get the red ship on the very first stage. It was a very easy hack to get a triple ship in Galaga 88. I've only spent like uh, I don't know, five minutes to hack Galaga 88. Galaga Arrangement proved to be a very stubborn game. And as you can see, I've came for an alternative hack in the end. I've spent like 10 minutes and uh, at some point I've just decided, well, if I can't hack the Galaga, the ship, the player's ship, maybe I should hack the boss Galaga that steals your ship. And here it is. I've turned this blue boss Galaga into a ladybug boss Galaga and here we are now with the red ship on the very first stage. That's how it goes, 10 minutes spent. And before that I've spent 7 hours to try and change the player sprite. I have even went as far as downloading a Japanese Galaga arrangement for mommy because Japanese Galaga because Japanese, you know, Galaga arrangement is a pa pack oh, is a part of a pack named Namco Classic Collection and Japanese Namco Classic Collection has a cheat which enables debug monitor. And said debug, debug monitor came very useful because I've come to understand how the whole sprite thing works in Galaga Arrangement. You know, you can make yourself any bonus, you know, blue bonus shots, red shots or yellow shots, uh, with these, really with these, just about once again 5 minutes spent to hug that thing, but your sprite will stay that of a default ship. And how the sprites actually work is the fact that these bonus sprites are double sprites. So this, uh, the original ship is a single sprite and bonus ship are double sprite. It's probably the matter as well in Galaga 88, but in Galaga 88 the game kinda hooks up to, you know, to the bonus shots, it checks it and changes your sprite accordingly. Galaga arrangement doesn't change your sprite accordingly to the bonus. And with all those debug monitors, I, even though I could change the double sprite back to the usual single sprite, I couldn't change it back from the single sprite to the double sprite. So yeah, I've spent a lot of try time trying to figure out how to activate that function. Also not, Galaga arrangement proved to be a very stubborn game, but as I've said, I've managed to figure out how to change uh, to change the boss Galaga from one to another. I'm not sure if anyone but me will ever need that hack, so by default I do not attach any download files or any explanations for the hacks in the description. If you for whatever reason would like to know how to do it, just drop a commentary right there in the comment section and I will attach my small, rather, you know, modest, uh, small short notes somewhere for you to download and will answer any commentary. Uh, in this video, as you can see, I've only lived, uh, left the gameplay and I've edited out all the cheat engine stuff which I've done, which is not much really, it is a very easy hack. As for invincibility and all the other stuff which, which is used in this gameplay, I've actually used your default mommy cheats. Once again, I've came to it myself, it was a really easy hack, well, aside from invincibility, invincibility took a bit of time, but overall I've came to it myself, but as I've tried to hack for sprites, I figure out that I need something more substantial than cheat engine cheats for the invincibility. And in order not to waste time to convert for it from cheat engine to mommy cheats myself, I've just downloaded a cheat list. It is overall another point to this video, you know, I always go into it headstrong. I just launch cheat engine because I kinda know the work, so I launch cheat engine and I go straight into the code. In fact, a lot of work which I do has already been done for me and there are huge cheat lists for mommy games at least, huge cheat lists for almost every game, there are cheats for almost every game available, so there is no need to waste your time and, you know, uh, dig through the hole with cheat engine, just download those cheat lists and use it, I do not do it for some reason, 
On the other hand though, I think this might be a good practice to make more cheats from the start on my own, you know, show you how the games work and uh, since a lot of games work differently, it is kind of, you know, kind of a practice that helps you. You see how games work, how different they are, and so you can kind of logically, when you come to a new game, you can logically um, try and figure out how this game might uh, handle its code by comparing it with other similar games. So, you know, a sword of two edges, kind of a waste of time to make cheats on you for on your own and at the same time kind of a useful practice to make cheats on your own even though there are available cheats already. Overall up to you. So that was 5 minutes of the video and we still got about uh, 15 minutes to go. Well a bit less but still. Another huge video but at the very least it is not 40 minutes, right? <laughs> so yeah, what can I talk about? What can I talk about? Ooh, first of all, let's slow down, man. This was a lot of talk. Oh boy. You know what? There is one book which I wanted to bring to your attention for quite a while, people. And it is an old book from the 19... 1915, I believe. 19... Um, from 1910s, from the first part of 1910s, I don't remember the exact year, pardon me. And a book is named A Slap in the Face of Public Taste. You know, this is a very powerful title. It is a rather short Russian manifesto, Soviet to be exact, from the Soviet futurists. And um, in fact, I advise you to read it, it will tell you like... Uh, Five, seven minutes, not more. It is a very short manifest. A slap in the face of public face. A very nice... A very nice title, you know. I, I cannot agree with the book itself in its entirety. And the book itself, it uh, kind of describes uh, the fact that um, the public tastes as a popular thing has to be avoided at all costs. The manifest is very radical. It tell, tells you that all the classic authors have to be thrown away for the sake of the future. So throw away the Pushkin, Tolstoy, all those guys. They worth nothing. Just throw them away and do your own thing from the start. You know, go for the future, don't look for the past. I think it is way too radical, but well, these guys are futurists, so yeah. This explains it. I, I do not think that you gotta forget the past altogether. But overall, I even though I don't kinda agree, I, I write myself from time to time, and I cannot not ignore the fact, cannot ignore the fact, cannot not notice the fact that even though I do not agree with futurists, I use a lot of their points, like a lot of futurists did not um, particularly adhere to the grammar and they've, they've invented their own words, their own rules, their own languages. Those futurists' poems are crazy, they are practically, practically unintelligible, but that was the point. And thing is, I can't do that as well. I ignore a lot of grammar rules. I, for example, there's a uh, a letter Y yeah in Russian language, which is often read as E. Eh. And I do not like it. In all the words where it is grammatically correct to write yeah, but to read it as a, eh, I write a eh right away. Because why not? It is more comfortable for me. I do just that. And um, so it's like that. I invent my own grammar rules when it's, you know, when it's... Uh, when it's comfortable, when it works. When I feel like this should be like that, I just do that. So... Even though I do not think that you should uh, forget the past, the overall notion that you gotta do your own thing and push for it for your own vision, I guess it's kind of the right thing. And you know, the overall title, a slap in the face of public face, is what is gotta be done, you know? Especially nowadays, when the public taste is so mainstream, so popular, and so at the same time, it's so... Decadent, for the lack of a better word. It's the same thing all or, over and over. It's it's stagnate. It stands on one place. It's kind of a decadent stagnation. I'm not sure even how to describe it. 
but it, it really is very stagnant and decadent, not in the, you know, not in the progressive kind of, I mean, not in the kind of, uh, you know, decadence is an, usually it is, I, I think at least, it is usually means as an overflow of something, or, or overkill, you know, too much gold or too much color and overall decadent something is so focused on the style decadent work is so focused on the style that everything else is kind of forgotten uh, if you can call it uh, i guess you can call it if you can call it like that you can call it style over substance that what decadence is in my head and uh, it is overall too focused on one thing, too focused on something, and overall forgets everything else. And with this uh, description of the word decadence is in mind, uh, I think pop culture is decadent stagnation. It's so focused on the uh, on the styles and the ways that has already been tested. They, it is so focused on plots and characters that sell that it doesn't make anything new at all. It is a decadent stagnation. You see, it is... Yeah, it's so focused on the thing that has been tested. It is so afraid to fail to try out something new that it never tries them. That's how I see the modern art in general. It is all the things of the past, which is, you know, it's kind of a good thing. Remake on occasion can be done and can be done well. For example, I love Romeo plus Juliet from the 90s with Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, Leonardo. Oh, boy. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That um, remake of a classic tale in modern... Uh, in modern uh, decorations is just gorgeous and just man look at the cars in that movie you know i'm a car boy you can buy me with a couple cars easily but that movie looks good the weapons the modern lines the everything it's good so remakes can be good but you gotta try something new you gotta try new mixes you gotta try new ways to remake old stuff modern culture doesn't do it it does all the old oh yeah here i go again but that's how I feel, man. That's how I feel. It does all the all the stuff again and again. You know, stagnation, decadent stagnation. I think, I think it uh, it sums it up nicely. And you know, in the official description of the word decadence, I believe it is also mentions that decadence means uh, uh, it kind of angles towards the immoralism. So decadence decadence is uh, immoral by the by the official description, so to say, by the official definition. And I think immorality fits it quite well as, as well. Uh, immorality fits the modern art, modern culture quite well as a word. You see, it's immoral stagnation, completely immoral stagnation, and it focuses only on the profits. It is the culture of the capital, completely decadent, immoral, stagnate culture. So yes, a slap in the face of public taste is what we might do, is what we need to do, man. That old manifesto, right now it uh, works rather nicely. I think it, uh, perhaps futurists of uh, the 1910s looked way too much into the past, so they denounced Pushkin and Tolstoy and all the old writers, but those writers were decades before them. Nowadays, culture changes much quicker. Overall, it, everything changes much quicker. I mean, look how fast internet changed from the 90s to the 2010s. Uh, so perhaps a futurist manifesto, uh, manifesto of today would not... Uh, talk about the writers of the decades old eras it will it will it would have talked about writers of you know just a couple years ago and i'd say we gotta forget them we gotta forget the avengers the dc the marvel we gotta forget them we gotta discard them and start it all on you from point one uh, a slap in the face of public taste 2023 that's how it sounds, and yeah, it sounds awful, I guess, and I guess if you've listened to all the things I've said, 
It should probably tell you why I will never become an orator of any kind. But you know, screw that, all those modern guys, they... Once again I'm gonna mention it, but I don't make plots, I just say things from my head, like directly, so... Whatever comes to my head, I say it. I'm truthful. I do not edit my text. Well, too much. I do some editory in videos when I cough or uh, sneeze or something. But overall, this is raw. And this is the truth. So how I feel, I bring it to you. So yeah, man. Maybe I do a lot of mistakes. Maybe my English sucks. But this text, it has no plot. This is how I feel, man. And this is the truth right here. And you hear it. Oh boy. Just the text I've needed for the Galaga, I guess. Perfect commentary for the old silly game in the 80s arcades. <laughs> well, 90s arcades, I believe. Galaga Namco Classic Collection, it is the 80s or is it the 90s? I'm not even sure. But overall though, you know, I know my channel could have been way more popular if I would have just go for popular games. It is. It is really easy thing to notice. My most popular videos are the ones for the popular games. For example, videos about Watch Dogs, they earned thousands of views. And there was not even much effort put into them. Watch Dogs is just one of the major games made by Ubisoft. And all the kids play it. It's a franchise which is still alive. Like, what the last game was? Legions? It is rather recent. Just a couple years ago it came out. Kids play Legions, kids play Watch Dogs, kids watch Watch Dogs videos, ah. It's easy to notice that, so I could just make couple GTA videos and... Well, actually I make I made couple GTA videos and those are rather popular as well, so I could just push for that. I could make GTA videos, I could make Watch Dog videos, Watch Dogs videos, I could make videos for popular games and rise up in no time. But I prefer to be here with you, you know, I prefer to be a small channel if it, you know, if it means that I'm staying true to myself. Now, some people, I know, some people have other thoughts, I know they could have say, well, you could have drop several popular videos and then you could spread your message to a wider audience and, you know, you could be a big channel for a moment and still be a true to your own, you know, to your own message. Well, I don't know, yeah, maybe I'm a fool, but I... I think it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of a cheat. And even though I like cheating in video games, that kind of cheat, in my opinion, just doesn't work. It, I'm, I'm here without doing any advertisement, without doing what I do not want to do. And all the Watch Dogs videos I've done, I've done it because I wanted to do it. And nothing more. I didn't want to make my channel more popular when I was doing more videos. I wanted to do the things I wanted to do to be done. You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's foolish to stick to your own principles that much. Maybe, uh, maybe I actually should drop them for a moment and make several videos to increase my own popularity. But as for now, I still feel like, and I've been at it for like. 10 years already? I don't know, 7, 8, whatever. My channel has been around for quite some time at this point. 6 years, maybe 5. Still, years long. Years long and I still feel like I'm cool with things how they will, things going how they are going on their own. I don't know, once again, maybe this is a foolish thought, but I think doing things simply to promote yourself, simply to be more public, I think it's kind of dirty business. Well, after all, the name of this video is a slap in the face of public taste, right? <laughs> so yeah, beat it. That's my position. Oh boy. And that was Galga Arrangement. You know, <laughs> I gotta say I love this game. Love these soul arcades. They're so bright, so lively. And this is something we we really miss in our day and era. It's so dull nowadays. The colors are black, white, gray. At best, dark blue, dark green, or dark red. We need these arcades to come back, we need the good art to come back again. So I don't know about you, but I hope it will happen one day. I hope good times will come back. As for now, stay cool, cats. Good luck.